Cartoons, the animated frontier. These are the voyages of the Cellcast podcast. It's continuing mission to explore strange new cartoons, to seek out new animation styles and new creative storytelling methods, to boldly go where so few ever go again. Welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. Reactions. Joining me today is a man who uh, is just trying to get back to Earth. Welcome, Jacob. Why, thank you. I'd like to introduce our co-host, a man who accidentally got stuck in a cat's body. <laughs> Welcome, Drew. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Jacob? Man, I'm doing good. Uh, this is actually the first episode we've done in like the last two weeks almost. Pretty much. Uh, we are doing a reactions to the new Disney Pixar movie, Soul, that was released on Disney Plus because Disney didn't put it in theaters like they should have. Sad, sad, sad. Indeed. Uh, unlike most of our reactions episodes, though, we are doing this a tad differently because we both have already watched the movie yes so yeah you're not getting that bit at the beginning where we talk about what we want to see in yeah. the movie so we're gonna jump straight into our spoiler free thoughts on soul yeah jacob your thoughts all right uh spoiler free wise oh man i wasn't the hugest fan of this i wasn't a huge fan of this film uh i'm not gonna say it was a bad film i'm not mm -hmm. gonna say it was the greatest film it's kind of a middle of the road. I have a lot of problems with the film. There, there are certain elements throughout the film that have me questioning why in the world they go to that direction. And our main character has a very, has a tendency of getting out of things very easily. And there's no real consequence without uh, no consequences of any, any sort. Now, if you are looking for a a general fun time of a movie, this is the you know you, this is your bread and butter there. But if you're looking at like the the heart and soul, you know to pardon the pun, yeah, pardon the pun, you're gonna have, probably have a little bit of problems with this movie if you're gonna want to deep dive with this movie mm -hmm. and. Being a reviewer, you're looking for all the flaws, and you just see everything. It it show it shows itself almost instantaneously. So yeah, I am interested to get to the spoiler section for you to expound on a lot of this. Okay, because <laughs> while this is definitely a poor man's Inside Out in yeah. many ways, yes, uh. And most of it, I I can follow the logic yeah. pretty well between scenes. I mean, a lot of the music in here does involve jazz. Yeah. I'm not a big jazz person. I like a little bit of jazz, but not most of the jazz that we hear in this, if that makes any yeah. sense. Uh, I f do follow a lot of the logic they're using here, but what... I am seeing in a lot of cases, I don't know if I completely agree with just yeah. the way it's set up. Agreed. Uh, but at the same time, if you go into it, you're just looking for a good, fun movie. I mean, this is definitely not, I think this tries to be a head scratcher, a, a, a one to make you think, but it's really not. No, it's not. It's not. It's very shallow. Meat and potatoes. I'm going with shallow. Okay. <laughs> It's trying to be deep, but it never yeah, gets it does it never gets down there. Okay, uh, that's, at least that's my thought. Um, so yeah, I mean, it definitely give it a shot, make your own decisions. But uh, this is just not as uh, this is not Pete Doctor's best work as a director. Okay, okay. I'll just say that. So yeah. Uh, so join us on the other side of the bumper, and we'll get into spoiling this thing. Ray, we're wrong. Okay, 
Risk Progress is a part of Christian Reek Central Network. Uh, Reek Central Rock Rock. Hey, Scoop, what are you doing, man? I don't know. I'm supposed to be reading an ad. <laughs> All right, hold on. Give me, give me it. Okay. <laughs> All right. This podcast is part of the Christian Geek Central Network at ChristianGeekCentral.com. There you can find a collection of blogs and podcasts working together to bring you some of the best content on the web for Christian geeks, such as the Strangers and Aliens podcast. Strangers and Aliens is a conversational podcast and blog that explores the relationship between God and man through the lens of speculative and imaginative fiction and explores speculative and imaginative fiction through the lens of God's relationship with men. Join Ben, Dr. Jace O'Neill, and Steve McDonald, a trio of Christians who are both fans and creators of story, in their conversation about the intersection of faith and imagination. Okay. The following is a spoiler-filled reaction to the movie Soul. Listener discretion is advised. Okay, so you have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I, th- that, I think we both have some very you know, yes. deep, deep philosophy, deep theological uh, yeah. insights to trying to you know get so deep diving into this. Just movie. so we're all on the same level. Obviously, this guy whose name I can't remember, Joe. Joe, yeah, Joe. Uh, he's a music teacher, teaching jazz, but he mm. always was dreaming of his big break. Yes, he gets his big break. And then immediately falls in a sewer. Yeah. All and, of the luck. And is essentially dead. Yeah. Except his body's... Apparently the body does not die till the soul has actually gone through the big giant... Void of void nothing. Of noth- well, whatever that giant ball of light was. Yeah. That's obviously supposed to be the barrier. Yeah. And then uh, he doesn't want to die, so he keeps running the other direction. He finally works his way through some other little barrier that allows him to fall into the place where the souls are born are created. I don't think it's really, they're born, but it's more, it's, where it's, the, it's where the souls are before they're born into babies. There we go. Basically. Yes. And, uh, he gets, they think he's, they think he's supposed to be a mentor. Yes. That's supposed to help mentor these child souls before they go into, before they get ready to go start living. Yeah. And he gets, Paired with soul number 22, mm-hmm. who's been there quite a long time since yeah. the one before her was what? Soul three, three trillion, four hundred and seventy six thousand or something like that. Something like that. It was a huge number. Yeah. She's been there for like a th- She's been, thousands of years. Well, she was the 22nd soul created. So technically she's been there a while. Yeah. Uh, and she's been mentored by thousands of the greatest minds the earth probably is or greatest personalities. Right. Especially from a secular point of view mm-hmm. that have uh graced our earth and they all hate her after a while. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so he, they start coming together and eventually they, she tries to start helping him try to get back to his body when she realizes he's, dead and is trying to get back home and that his body might still be alive. Mm -hmm. So he, they go to the zone where apparently people who are, um, when someone gets in the zone doing something they love, yeah, that's where they technically go. But if you stay in the zone too long and it becomes an obsession, you get gobbled up by the ground and turn into this weird, monster thing yeah until weirdos who have been on too many drugs who can go to the zone quite easily yeah. and have their memories of being there which explains a lot of of their drug filled well, stuff also also be like that's they never what, say drugs but I mean, let's no. face it they use the hippie peace symbol they do a uh, lot <laughs> I, I i do what when, when this is one of the parts i do like about the movie that it has this where when you go when you go into the zone of like the artistic viewpoint yeah. where Joe, it's like he just gets really into the, you know, gets into his music and he just feels it and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, like we, if you're an artist, you understand that. 
be like you just like you pour yourself into a piece well, it's or not just art i mean if anything that you are feel a particular affinity for yeah that's what i mean you get into that you're going and elvis it just goes from being something you're working up to being natural mm-hmm. like it's a part of you and you're just kind of there i mean i've heard of uh, athletes being able to do this mm-hmm. uh of course artists uh drivers uh pretty much anybody who does something that's you know mm-hmm. that gets into you that's your passion mm-hmm. exactly that's what it comes down to it's passions yeah but when you allow your passion to become your obsession yeah that's when you get turned into the giant obsession monster things down yeah. at the bottom and uh they find a way to get him they find a thin spot in order to help joe get back to earth but he accidentally pulls in 22 with him yep and if you know anything about how these movies work and the fact that we're only 40 minutes into the movie at this point Mm -hmm. i think you kind of know joe's going into the cat and 22's going into joe yeah it's 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 a little itself painfully obvious yes and at that point uh Joe's trying to help her to get him to try and get what he wants. And she's learning how cool life can be. Yeah. So she she gets her a bit, which gives actually will, we will find out later, gives her her spark Mm -hmm. so that she's ready to go to earth and be born because, but Joe is still thinking that the spark that does all this is dealt to what you're meant to do with your life. Yeah. And by just skipping ahead a little, because there's a lot of there's a lot of well written story parts in here, but yeah. there's a a lot of it's fluff. If we're it being is. honest, Agreed. it's good fluff. It's character development, but yes. it's not a lot of plot. Yeah. Uh. So by the time they're able to get Joe get um uh, get J- uh twenty two twenty two twenty two gets back to. They get 22 back to there, find out she's got her Earth pass. Mm-hmm. But Joe is saying, oh, she's only got her Earth pass because she was in my body and she experienced all these things that I like. Yeah. And that kind of throws her into a depression. So she goes back to her little box home thing. He goes back to Earth. He plays the show of his life with the person he most uh, idolized in life mm-hmm. only to find out that there's not much difference no. between how things were then. How th- he, he, he finally arrived and it's not any different than it was before. Mm-hmm. Might got to be a little extra money, but at the same time, he, uh, he realizes that and thinks, well, if that's all there is, maybe really 22 should have the shot more than me. Yeah. So he finds a way back. He fi- gets himself back into the zone, mm-hmm. finds her. And then, she's turned into one of these obsession monsters. Cause mm-hmm. now she's not that she's obsessed, but she's con- convinced that she has no, no purpose. She she's, con- she's consumed with grief. Exactly. Uh, she has, she has no value. And as he goes and tries to save her, he eventually gets swallowed by her, the sand that's surrounding her body that caught, turns them into those little monster things. And while he's in there, he sees every one of the, her mentors that, talk down to her and they're all relatively small as he gets closer one jumps out that's far bigger and it's him Mm -hmm. and pretty much telling her the same thing and he has to fight through that to get her to realize no no that i was wrong uh the sparks about you know you're ready to live It's, it's your turn to go down there i've had my shot yeah and finally he breaks through you know everything gets healed she go he helps her take that final step, even though he's going to not going to be able to go. Cause he's going to go as far with her as he can. Right. And when he comes out, he gets dumped back in to the escalator into death. Mm-hmm. But the little wire monstros, uh, wire a- aspects of the universe that have been, I've not brought up until this minute. Yeah. Give him his happy ending and allow him to go back to earth mm-hmm. and he gets to keep on living. Yeah, it's doing something because we're that's that's the issue. Yeah, it's open ended. We not it, the both twenty two story and his story are completely open ended. We know nothing about what happened after they left. Yeah, the the only thing we're really left with is like okay, Joe now has this 
be like he wants to live his life that mm-hmm. he spent his entire career, his entire life goal of be like, I've got to be a jazz musician right. and I've got to do this. And like you said before, he has be like, he gets that night. He has that moment. And then it's just, it's like, and here we are, here we are. I've got to do it again tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not everything he cracked up to be like, he was boasting that, Oh, my names are going to be in lights and that kind yeah. of stuff. It's just, it's like, that was step one. Now we just keep doing it over and over yeah, and over exactly. and over again until you croak. Yeah. Maybe you'll get a step up. Maybe you won't. Maybe things will work better. But I, what he he was looking at that show, playing with his mentor as being the fulfillment of everything he's been dreaming of for the past 50 years. Yeah. And guess what? It wasn't the fulfillment of anything. Yeah. And to some degree, I wonder if he realized he got more fulfillment from teaching than he ever got playing jazz. Yeah. Maybe he just didn't realize it. That's my thought. Of course, at the same time, I was watching the beginning of this movie and thinking, his story is going to be the plot to Mr. Holland's Opus, isn't it? Which I like Mr. Holland's Opus. It was a much better movie than this movie was, if you want to know my personal opinion. Okay. But, I mean, it is about a band teacher who's dream is to play is to write this opus this this Mm -hmm. piece of work but he never but he never had enough money so he ended up going to teach band at a school and he ends up because of just the way things are doing that for the rest of his life yeah but at the end uh there's a performance where all his past kids Mm -hmm. who have gone on to do much bigger and better things come back and they play you know, the the thing he'd been writing for so long, but they mention and that as that they are his opus, mm. not the song they're about to play. Yeah. That is essentially what's going on here. But at the same time, we don't get any wrap up. No. Uh, now. Both of us are Christians. And so I kind of take a little bit of uh umbrage at the concept that the because the what this what the story movie is trying to tell you it's it's thesis statement is that life's worth living because it's life yeah exactly yes and no <laughs> you know what i mean mm-hmm. i mean to me life is worth living because we were placed here for a purpose we don't know what that purpose is half the time, but we, and we don't know the results of our actions, mm-hmm. but as Christians, we're here to, you know, do God's work on this earth and preach his, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I know this is a secular company. They're very secular. Mm-hmm. So that's not the, their thought process it is a very uh, modern take of what is the meaning of life. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know. It just, it just was something. I, I, I don't know. I just did not like the story. What, it, what, what it was, the message it was trying to. Preach. Yeah. I, in a way I do, because yeah, you should be living your life to the fullest, fullest and don't let yourself get, um, bogged down by regrets and obsessions. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, that's, you're not quite going far enough as to what, and and they're not going to go far enough because they're well, Disney and Disney's Disney. Right. Uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts? I've been yapping for a bit. <laughs> uh, along the same lines, what definitely comes to the, the, the view of afterlife and what the, the ultimate purpose of life is. Mm-hmm. Um, their portrayal of life is, that if you you have to live your life to the fullest yeah. and enjoy everything, well, you can't enjoy everything. You can't enjoy everything because you, there, there's always gonna, there's always going to be those those um, be like you're going to find one passion and yeah. you're you're gonna you're not you are going to constantly searching and searching and searching mm-hmm. for that fulfillment in your life and you're never going to find it. Now you can find simple joys and things, but if it's more be like you are in search for the, the, the something that's going to make you happy, it's never going to happen. Yeah. 
because there's there's a part of us that wants to be connected with something greater and bigger mm-hmm. and like like for myself it's you know finding my relationship in Jesus Christ yeah so that that's where I get my fulfillment where and now people who I'm not going to downplay people that say oh because you're a Christian be like blah 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 I'd be like people can find purpose find purpose in what they do just from from my perspective from my perspective in my faith is there's never you're never going to fill that void you're constantly yeah. looking over your shoulder and looking constantly over and over and over again and you're never going to be content with life mm-hmm. so life is a lot more than just being happy because yeah. happiness be like finding some fulfillment in life yeah we all need to find something that we enjoy mm-hmm. but like the movie it's, it's it shouldn't consume us right um that was one of the things I think did bother me in this is they are only showing things worth living that were happy. Yeah. I mean, sure. We would all look forward to the happier moments in life, but some of the things that make those happier moments so much, so great is some of the more tragic moments in our life. Also, yes, the character dies, but he doesn't die completely. We never see anyone grieve. We see a little bit of, we don't even see grief over his father having passed. Yeah. He wasn't, did it pass in the movie, mind you happened long ago, but okay. One of the things that bugged me. Okay. His mother is very obviously wanting him to take the steady job because she doesn't want him to go through the lows that his father went through. right? Right. Right. Until he finally says, a couple things uh, he, he goes off on his rant and then it's like, okay, fine. I'll make, I'll do everything for that. You, you're that passionate about it. Sure. And I'm thinking you could fight back a little bit. You could explain how as great as that was for her, his father, that there was, were other things that didn't, that, that uh, there were lows there. It was not the be all end all, that even his father thought it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously his father made a bit of a name for himself, but it was never a big enough name to get them out of squalor from what I could tell. Yeah. Um, she just kind of, after he gives his impassioned speech, just like, okay, fine. You don't have to get the full-time job with the benefits and the ability to, uh, you know, have a stable life, have stability. Yeah. I'm thinking, show me a little bit more she just turns so fast from oh i'm the mo- I- i'm your mother and you should be doing this i'm disappointed in you it's like well i don't want to see them fight but at the same time it's like she turns too fast to his point of view agreed and th- and to like your point the fact to be like it's from her perspective it's be like i want you to thrive i want you to yeah. have be like which, stability in your life and which, this isn't going to be right be like Right. Like you said before, the fact to be like, this could go nowhere. This could be I'm, like, you could, you could play this band for, you know, 20 years and get nowhere with it. Yeah. And it's her fear. It's her fear saying this. It's and not a steady gig. It's not. No. He, he, there's no guarantee that he's going to be in that band next week. Yeah, exactly. And he's going to give up his school job for that. Yeah. Well, I understand at when you work a job like that Mm -hmm. being very much like, Oh, I wish I could get out there. But you look at some of his, some of the kids he's working with. Yeah. There's a couple who are not going to do anything with the music, but he's got a couple he's able to work with. Yeah. That's like, those are, that's what you should be focusing on. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the highlight of your career right there. Yeah. Sure. You want to go and you want to play with these, all these other people. And yeah, that's great. But not everyone's going to be famous. Yeah, he's 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 very short sighted. He wants he's he's very goal oriented. Yeah, but he's missing everything behind him. Right. In order just to reach that, be like, I've got to play this night and play this gig, and that's my yeah. life. And that's he, not he, life. He gets that gig, and you know, to use to use the uh, story that the 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 leader that man told him, he's a fish looking for the ocean. He's found the ocean, but doesn't think he has. Yeah. He's, he's not that he, he thinks he's not there yet. Yeah. 
Now, I understand as someone who wants to excel in their art, mm-hmm. uh, in many ways, you never stop working on it. No, it's, you're it's, always going towards that next goalpost. Yeah, it's a constant process. But obviously, he went into that, uh, both that audition and that performance, thinking he had finally reached the finish line and it was just all smooth sailing from that point. Yeah. And guess what? It wasn't going to be. No. He had a more stable, smooth sailing thing if he'd stayed at the school. Yeah. I'm not saying don't, you know, don't, I'm not saying give up on your dreams or anything and, or, you know, be realistic or anything. Just think about what, what you're doing. Mm Because I don't know. I'm trying, I'm not really explaining myself too well. It's just by the end of this movie, his story was like, you, you, but he finally reaches the end of the story where I was about 30 minutes into the movie about what he should be doing. Yeah. And even then, because it's open-ended, we don't even know if he actually realizes he should go back and work for the school. Yeah. Because there's no guarantee he's ever going to, you know, if he continues work doing the band, he can work with the school also. Cause I've, yeah. I've heard theories mm-hmm. about the ending of this where, Oh, he's going to, go back and work at the school, but then on the weekends play with this band or in his off time. And I'm thinking, no, he's probably not. And if he goes to work for the school, he's probably going to have to give up playing with all these people. He got his ch- chance in the spotlight. And now maybe he's going back to living his life. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it almost implies that it almost yeah. implies that like he, that Joe is more, he comes to the realization that life is more than just jazz. Yeah. Or trying to fulfill that that desire he wants in his life. And it could possibly be that he does go back to the school. I, I would yeah. hope. Um, but it's. Like you said, it's an open ended story and we get no conclusion, no resolution to anything in this film, which is annoying. It is very annoying. I mean, it's an artistic choice. Don't yes. get me wrong. And it's not a bad choice and they do it well. It's mm-hmm. just. Eh. And it doesn't help that you've got all these other it's it's you got all these other characters that don't do anything. You've got, of course, all her mentors, which are all these historical people. So you know who they are when you see them. Yeah. You've got the Jerry's Mm -hmm. and the antagonist version, Terry. Yeah. Uh, Which he's like a pseudo antagonist. Pseudo antagonist. Yeah. He's more of just a timer. In a, if, it, if it was a video game, he's the timer that you have to get the mission done by. Yeah. Um, and, th- and I like the way they animated those characters. Yeah. Because they kind of had a 2D feel while everything else was in 3D. You can tell that, at least on the souls, that they were using some of the tech they generated for Inside Out, but mm-hmm. kind of found a way to unfocus the edges so they kind of just went ephemeral at at the lines, you know, yeah. like blurry. Uh-huh. And I thought that was good. But at the same time, I was watching this and going, this feels like it should have been one of the 15 minute shorts or not the 15 minute, but the shorts that play before a Pixar movie. Okay. Not the movie. <laughs> Cause and you can, you could have done this entire story as without dialogue. Yeah. With just, you know, them playing jazz over it in the animation, I think it would have worked fairly well. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of thing, visual elements in this that feel like they would have been done in a in a, one of those shorts. Yeah. But instead, we get this hour and a half movie that, don't get me wrong, is still... I, mean, I appreciate the amount of detail they put into making it actually look like the characters are playing instruments. Mm-hmm. But the jazz is almost secondary to what the story is about. So it's not like Coco, where the music was the entire point of, well, not the entire point, but was a major part of every character's existence. Exactly. This is only really Joe. It, it's not in 22's, it may not be what 22 is interested in later. Because yeah. we don't, because we don't know anything about 22. Yeah. 
all, all, all we really know is that she gets to live that experience as mm-hmm. Joe on Earth. And that's and- what gives her her experience, her spark to get to turn her thing into a lo- Earth pass so she can go back, go to Earth and live her life. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of on that, that same vein where we're we're introduced to the characters they have to they have to find their spark Mm -hmm. and it's all about be like oh they're a firefighter they're this and this and this and this but by the end of the movie it's transitioned from a almost a skill into oh you just have to live life well that's the thing when they first explaining that spark thing they make it they intentionally make it sound like you are you right before you were born you have to find that one thing mm-hmm. that is going to define your life. Exactly. Despite the fact that you're going to go through childbirth and forget everything from being up here. Yeah. Because they say that too. Yeah. And then that makes no sense. somehow have to rediscover that on Earth. That's how they make it sound. Yeah, it does. And and the excuse at the end is like, oh, the spark's not your purpose. It's what makes life worth living. Mm-hmm. And then I'm thinking, then why are you showing them all this other garbage? Yeah, exactly. Basketball, as much as I'm sure people love playing basketball, oh, yeah. it's not what makes life worth living. Yeah. Show them human experiences. Real. I mean, that's what that Hall of You thing is supposed to show. Yeah. But for the most part, that's not what happens in there. And they get the Hall of Everything, which is, I suppose we got everything in it that's supposed to sh- show you here's the things that you can do that will make life worth living Mm -hmm. which is good since the souls can't smell breathe or smell taste or Mm -hmm. have any senses but sight yeah and so how are they supposed to get into cooking yeah that's just (laughs) it's 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 like like you said the fact that it has this i mean they have this this whole joke total switch they have this whole joke in there about oh yeah it's uh here try this pizza pizza's so great and she's like yeah, I can't smell that. I can't. You can't smell it either, by the way. Yeah. It's like, how do you not know you can't smell a pizza? Uh, <laughs> uh, or, you know, the she te- he, he she she eats it. It's like, yeah, it doesn't taste like anything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, of course, that explains why she doesn't understand why life's worth living. She's very practical. Her, per- her personality is very practical. Mm-hmm. But it takes them getting back to Earth. For her to finally eat real pizza to realize, oh, this is what all that stuff's about. Well, no wonder she doesn't want to go to Earth before this. You're giving her subpar ideas up mm-hmm. here. So how is that supposed to be giving you your purpose? Yeah. What is the entire point of the Hall of Everything? Because I don't know if anyone we saw up there actually learned anything while yeah. they were in there. We at least get the only excellent thing the Hall of You does is show her, oh, you're not Dr. Hofstadter or whatever the guy's mm. name yeah, was. Yeah, exactly. He, That's all it does. So thing. It shows, oh, you're this guy who likes jazz. Oh, I hate music. It's like, well, goody two shoes for you. I hate you, 22. <laughs> Though kudos for to Tina Fey for saying, uh, for, for allowing herself to be, to trash herself. Because she says, oh, yeah, I could choose any voice I wanted. I choose this voice because it's annoying. It's like, wow. Wow. <laughs> you actually said that line. Uh, that can't couldn't have been degrading in the slightest. No, no, it didn't. No. But anyway. Yeah. Just, there, There's a like, Oh, wow. Just that 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 whole point you just yeah. you, the 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 hall of what was it again the hall of you or the hall of everything the hall of everything the hall of you the whole thing yeah it makes zero sense and be like these characters are to like learn what their passions are be but like you said before you completely forget it when you're born and you have to learn it all over again so why bother why is why is 22 still up here why why is 22 not gone down to earth and lived the life but From just, what I gather, the the souls will not go down to Earth until they want to live. Yeah. So all of that is supposed to get a soul to want to live. Yeah. Twenty two did not want to live. Apparently, until she went, until she got dragged into Earth and ran around in Joe's body for a while and got to know people, right. got to understand what life was. While I know statistically there has to be at least one soul like that. 
I think statistically there's got to be a lot more than just one. Yeah. If that's how you're looking at it, because honestly, she's been there long enough that she's maturing. Yeah. As, even though she's not been to Earth yet. Yeah, all the other and that's the biggest difference between her and all the other souls is the other souls, they're still childlike. They have yeah. not had to they have not had millennia to think. Mm-hmm. She's had millennia to think and why she doesn't want to go anywhere. And but at the same time, it's like, oh, I've had millennia to think. I'm going to get dragged down to Earth, and that's going to change my mind. Hmm. And I'm thinking, why would that experience change your mind? Sure, you have a lot of experiences there that are seem a bit contrived, mm-hmm. if we're being honest. Agreed. But why you're going to get back up there, and yeah, when you get back to the U Seminar thing... You might feel that loss, but what does actually going there? She should not have gotten the earth pass until she realizes she was back and wasn't going back to earth. Yeah. That's when she should have got the earth pass because she realized she did want to live, but that's not what they show. They show her already having the earth pass when they get back. Yeah. And so it's like, So this, you so so you gained experience and now you can go to Earth, right? And because you, you're going to forget everything you just heard, exactly everything you just learned. At that point, why aren't the constructs just throwing these souls down to Earth and saying, "Have fun"? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of interesting ideas with you know how they were choosing personalities and mm-hmm. such, but at the same time, it's like. And I guess you're talking about a nature versus nurture sort of argument there, but yeah, it's 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 going along those lines more. It's yeah, it's it's, is, it's your natural, it's your nature, not your nurture. Yeah, it's like uh, oh, oh you oh you were born a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, they, they this shows it's like okay, you're gonna be neurotic. You're gonna be. It's like why would you give somebody that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like, yeah, we, like when it comes to more uh, psychological things, the fact to be like, yeah, some people have more like a psychological tendency to be this, but it doesn't mean they're going to be this. Right. It's just, Not all narcissists are going to be serial killers. Right. I'm just, it's just, I look at this thinking, I know what you're trying to do. And I don't think, you, to quote another movie, you thought you think you knew you spent all this time doing this thing and never thought about, should you do this thing? Cause this movie, I don't really like that much. Yeah. It's got, it had possibility when we saw the trailers back before this COVID thing hit. Oh yeah. Cause it felt like, Oh, he's going to die and he's going to have to find a reason to come back. Maybe it was going to be like a, in my mind, we were going to get kind of a jazz filled version of it's a wonderful life. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he was not supposed to die and he was supposed and uh they've got to get him back to earth and that's what I was thinking this was going to yeah. be. That's not what this is. No. This is I'm obsessed. I have to play jazz. But it's I'm not my time. But it's not my and so it can't be my time to die yet. Yeah. It's like, well, crap happens, dude. Yeah. This is not about this is like yes, we have our passions, but it's not about you. Yeah. And that's, I'm going to be honest, this is probably my least favorite Pixar movie. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because it's that annoying. Yeah. Agreed. I know I'm going to, people are going to disagree with me, but I I just look at it and go, you've got a lot of good ideas here. A lot of them still need development, Mm -hmm. but you went ahead and did it anyway. And to make matters worse, there's not a character in this movie that actually like I mean, to some degree, I like Joe because they did put a lot of work into his character. Yeah. But for half the movie, I'm going, open your eyes, Joe. Quit being, I know you love jazz and all, but you didn't always love jazz. Your life did not begin when your dad drug you into that jazz uh, bar. Mm Mm-hmm. Nor did it begin when you got that audition, like you seem to think it does. You're still waiting for your life to begin when you realize when you haven't realized you're living life now. Yeah. And that's what makes his character kind of he he's the only character they've really thought about. And it's it's, 
of all the characters, all those protagonists in Pixar movies, I've never once thought, open your eyes. I've usually thought, let's see where you're going to take this. Yeah. At what point are you going to realize? This was like, dude, open your stinking eyes. And I don't know, maybe it's just I did not buy into the story as much yeah. as I would like. Yeah. But I I get the feeling this was a Pixar movie that was aimed at kids but meant for adults like Inside Out was. Mm-hmm. But they didn't quite capture that lightning in the bottle a second time. Yeah. If we're being honest. And yeah. I've got some issues with Inside Out too. Yeah. We'll get to the, we'll get there when we get there. Mm-hmm. Steal a phrase from our other show. But yeah, you know, it's just this is it's just it's a movie. Yeah. It's not the worst movie I've seen this year, but Right. Onward was better. I completely agree with that. <laughs> Inside Out was better. Up before this point, my thoughts on the weakest Pixar films were A Bug's Life and Brave. Mm. I think they're both better. Okay. I do like I do I do like the idea that we do have our first real African American, you know, lead character. I do like that. Be like, yeah, you 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 know, flex characters out, that kind of stuff. You know, create more diversity in your cast. That's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, just the if if you're going to go with this this jazz motif, make it the story. Make it how everything flows and moves with that jazz. I mean, to some degree, they do try to, but they never explain how jazzing it, as she as she keeps calling it, mm-hmm. is connected to jazz. Mm-hmm. It just feels like she thinks this is jazz, so I'm calling it jazz. Yeah. I mean, if you know anything about jazz, people always say that jazz music is not about the notes you play. It's about the notes you don't play, mm-hmm. which means it's about. Because it, it's imp- improvisational. Yeah, a lot improvisational of music in a lot of cases. I mean, you see when he picks up he a- and he asks what song we're playing and they just start playing and he's mm-hmm. able to get into it and mm-hmm. play along with them. Uh, but he doesn't know how to take that to the rest of his life. Yeah. There again, he's, he's so only, they, he's so, only obsessed with it. So they tried to get jazz into the main story, but they never explained how jazz fit with life, mm-hmm. how it could be a, how it could be a, an allegory for life. Yeah. We yeah. just don't get that. We don't get that. They don't explain it very well. Yeah. This this movie had a lot of potential, like you said before. Yeah, has a lot of potential, has a lot of growth it could have went into, but with mm-hmm. the direction they went, they kind of just got stuck. I wonder how much of it is because of uh, this last you know nine months they made it went with from home, yeah, and not being able to work in a studio together. Yeah. I wonder if that's what is a, what affected it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's what affected it, but this, it's just like you got a lot of the best way I know how to put it is there's a lot of interesting beats, mm-hmm. but there's almost no story. The story is very baseline. Yeah, agreed. Baseline, huh? <laughs> Pun not intended, but we'll take. It. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I think that comes down to we. I think we've. I think we've reached the end of the reactions. I, I think we have. Um, we're, we've decided we're going to kind of give a sort of a, not a rating per se, but a recommendation, I guess. Yeah, it's more of a recommendation. Uh, so basically, if we if we if we give the movie a yay, that means go watch it. Mm-hmm. If we give it a nay, don't go watch it. Mm-hmm. And if we give it a may, it's meh. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's middle of the road. It's like, take you... T- Take what we said and then make your decision. Exactly. I'm giving this a meh. Give it a meh. It's okay. not quite bad enough to be an, an A. Yeah. But I'm giving it a meh. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's, got, it's got some clever joke telling. It's I mean, like most Pixar movies. It's still good, even though it's not great. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> Not, it's not Pixar's best work. Okay, I got you. Uh, I will follow that with a yeah. It's definitely in May. It's it's a middle of the road. Uh, there was so much potential this movie had within it, 
uh, it was a little misleading in its in its uh, promotion and its campaigning. Um, but I mean, like, it does have some good elements. There, there, there's a lot of the afterlife and the meaning of life uh, that I don't agree with. Uh, I know some people might completely agree with it. You know, that's your choice to believe that or not. But overall, it's just kind of a meh, kind of a it's the middle of the road film that like go like for those who like go watch this movie, make your own opinion and comment down below what you think of the movie. You may love it. You may hate it. You may be with us and gets kind of a May film. So, you know, let us let us know what your thoughts are of this film um, when this episode is released. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the end of the show. So join us next time for whatever movie we're reviewing next. Probably, I don't know exactly the release order of this and KP. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Join us then. Thanks. Come, Jacob. We must prepare for next week. Prepare for what, Drew? Same thing we do every week, Jacob. Record a podcast! Oh, boy! So where can they find you, Jacob? They can find me on Facebook at Jacob B. Heron and Jacob's Daily Art Corner, my personal art Facebook page. On Twitter at Jacob B. Heron. On Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. And on Letterboxd at Jacob Heron. Where can they find you, Drew? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. You can also find my Facebook page at Drew's Photo Bin, where I upload uh, my photography. You can also follow me on Letterboxd at GGeorge759 and Twitter at GGeorge759. Where can they find us, Jacob? You can also visit our website, thecellcast.podbean.com, where you will find every episode we released and links to listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Stitcher, our RSS feed. If we aren't in your favorite podcast app directory, please share, review, and subscribe to us there and share us with your friends. You will also find a link to our Facebook group, the Double Feature Podcast Community, where we talk about both animated and live action movies. We share this with our other podcasts, which we do with Jacob's brother Jim at uh, the Movie of the Week podcast where we talk about live-action movies. You can also email us at thecellcastpodcasts at gmail.com. Also, please like our page on Facebook. We try to post about upcoming movies. If you comment on that movie's post before we record, we'll read your comments in the episode. And remember, every time we say The Cellcast, that is with a single L. L.